one. I am so excited uh, to be sharing this video with you this week. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that Steven and I spent the last week in Vermont and we had the best time. We were in the little town of Jamaica, but traveled to a lot of other small little quaint villages uh, through the mountains of Vermont and it was truly one of our favorite vacations. Before we jump into the video, if you are new to the channel, first of all, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you like planning, organization, home decor, DIYs, traveling, product reviews, skincare, cooking, basically if you like anything under the sun you will find something on this channel for you so go ahead and make sure that you click subscribe join the community it is a wonderful place to be a part of um, and it is a privilege to get to share little parts of my life and to learn more about you and connect and yeah join the fun for this travel vlog i decided to do it a little bit differently uh i didn't vlog every single day i vlogged key moments or things that i knew that you guys were super interested in and I just wanted to share those moments with you. So the trip was really amazing. And I think the first thing that made the trip so amazing was simply the house. This is the house and it's amazing. But we will go in and take a little tour of it. So here's the kitchen. The TV area. All these windows right here. And then upstairs. Let's go upstairs. I think there's another bedroom back there, but I think this is I think this might be like one of the master bedrooms. You guys are discovering this with me sink, a whirlpool tub. Maybe this is the master. Yes, I think this is. Oh, this is so cool. And then, then we have a little area here. Oh, look at this. There's like a see-through in the floor. This is so cool. Here is a basement. And I think this is all finished. Oh, it's so cool down here. Oh yes, this is so nice. So there is a fully finished basement with a game table. Yeah, this is great. Another TV setup and movies down here. And then I think there might be a bedroom. Yes, another bedroom here. This is awesome. I love it. If we go back here. There is another bathroom here. But what's really cool is there's a sauna in here. Oh my gosh, that's a fancy, it's a very fancy shower. And th this is our little week getaway. I share a lot of my recipes on Instagram. Like I said, if you're not following me, you should definitely hop over there and follow. But one of the recipes that I got asked the most about recently are the zucchini boats. So I made sure while on vacation to film that for you. We are in the kitchen and I am just making some dinner. So I have some lean ground turkey. We're gonna make zucchini boats. So I have this all browned. Now I'm not gonna use this whole can, but I'm just gonna add a can of, I'm not like I said, I'm not adding a whole can. I'll save the rest of that. Um, and then I'm just gonna add some Italian seasoning. I need to turn this down a lot. I'm gonna turn this on low. And I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning. Also a little bit of garlic powder. 
All right, and then have some pasta going for a pasta salad, but I'm gonna just let this cook a little bit and then we will catch up and I'll show you how I do the rest of it. All right, so I just halved my zucchini, scooped them out, put the filling in. I'm gonna top it with a little cheese. I have a little pasta salad we're going to make. Um, and then I'm gonna throw it in the oven at 400 for about a half an hour until the zucchini's tender. All right, dinner is served. So we have the pasta salad and the zucchini boats and some red wine. Look, we just got here and I already cooked for you. Yes. What's he having? As usual. One thing that was really great about the houses right across the road was this beautiful creek. And Stephen and I spent a lot of time um, exploring it, stomping around, and having a really, really good time. Um, oh my gosh, before we jump into that, I gotta show you something that is perfect for creeks outdoor for kids. They're the best shoes ever. So before we left for our trip, I grabbed a pair of these native shoes. They have holes all through them. They're completely rubber, even the sole. I wore these in the creek. I wore them out to dinner one night. Um, I am obsessed with them. They're so wonderful. Uh, yeah, these got me through a big bulk of the vacation because they were easy to like get sand in, get dirt, get wet, and then also be able to throw on a pair of like cuffed jeans and wear them out. I love them. I'm going to order another pair um, because I'm so obsessed with them. But these are great, great shoes, especially if you're gonna be like walking in water. I really love them. And that's what we spend a lot of our time doing. We just finished dinner and now we are just walking around the creek. Babe, you really needed to get like real shoes. What? You needed to get shoes. This feels so good. One of the things that Steven set up for this trip was a bookbinding class where we met this amazing woman named Patricia. I'm going to leave all of her information linked down below because if you have the opportunity and are on a vacation, I would love for people to go and support her, to learn more about her. She's absolutely lovely, but all of her information is linked down below, and she taught us an amazing, amazing bookbinding class to the point where I want to order a bookbinding kit and teach you and share some of the things that I learned. Oh, is this fun? And you said you apprenticed in London? I did. I apprenticed with a, a Polish bookbinder. Oh my gosh. four of us in the studio working. Do you want to tell the story about your book? Oh yeah, no, so I have, I brought this Bible. I don't know if we can bind it or fix it, but what happened was is that I was, it's my high school Bible, I went to Catholic high school, and I lost it my freshman year. And then my senior year, I reached under a desk in like another room in another part of the school, and there it was, and I know it was mine because I wrote my name on it. So I've had it for like, 30 years now? Sure. No, a little less than 30 years. Sure. And I wanted to see if we could, you know, do something with it. I don't know if we can or okay. not. What okay. do you call it? It's my magic Bible. Your magic yeah. Bible. My magic Bible. Because it came back to me. It so did. I don't really. It's always, it was always with you. Yeah, yeah. So that I bought, I brought this. Cool. Yeah. And then for me, I'm just gonna do like a journal of some kind because okay. I don't have any books to buy. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll show you what we'll start with. Yes. We'll, we'll take it from the yes. And we'll all make it all. That's amazing. Just... What made you decide to do bookbinding? Well, I was in London. I was working as a choreologist. What's that? Any idea? No. Choreologist. It's writing down dance on paper. I was going so, to say it has yeah. something to do with dance. Choreography should really be choreology choreology should really be choreography because it's the uh -huh. graphy, it's the writing uh -huh. down. Okay. And so you're writing down choreography, you're working with a choreographer and dancers. And it's the ballets and dances have always been handed down from the creator, the choreographer to the dance master and then taught. But everything gets lost over time. It's like a musician teaching someone yeah. else the next Mozart score and they then they teach it to the next it's like telephone. Oh okay. You know, it always gets lost. So having the dance score written down is very specific of, you know, which way your wrists are. Anyway, I was tired of working there as librarian and this 
job came up in the paper looking for an apprentice oh. at this bindery in London. That's so cool. I bicycled across London and worked for this man. And it was like a Dickens workshop in one of these tall yeah. back stairs and we folded paper for an hour and a half and then we had a cup of tea. Uh -huh. And then we glued paper for an hour and a half and then we had lunch. And then we, whatever. Oh. Every day. What an experience. Know. Yeah, totally, totally. It's, it's very much in here. And, it, and I've always liked making things, mm -hmm. from, you know, whatever, ceramics or whatever, crafts. So that sort of stuck. Yeah best thing you could do here is that you actually wet all these and then the paper is made from water uh -huh. and it will straighten out. Oh, okay. So you can get rid of all these curves Creases. by just taking a little sponge or your spit. Uh -huh. which, sorry, I just back uh -huh. here. But it will flatten all these. Okay. And that way at least you'll have a flat page. Uh -huh. The other thing is that it could be bound. I mean, the, the binding is okay. Uh -huh. And these are end pages, the front pages that yeah. you have. So we probably, if I was doing this, I would add another frontispiece, piece, just plain paper. Okay. And that's how you would attach the cover. Okay. On the other hand, you could also just have a book that it goes in, uh -huh. if it's more sentimental. Okay. But like all these papers, I won't, I won't lick them. You just have to like wet them. <laughs> yeah, just you don't want it too wet. Okay. But it, as it's paper, it's just going to want to lie flat. What we're going to do now that you've lightly folded it is we're going to crease it with the bone folder. And there again, you're going to put it in the middle and go off edge, off the edge, off the edge. Does it matter which side? Should it be like the your you're, clamp? Yeah, you're using the edge of the bone folder. You don't want it. No, I mean the, the the which side of the paper. It's totally up to you. Okay. You're right, exactly. Okay. This is a laid paper, so it's got a bit of a texture. And if you want, it's going to be one side or the other. Okay. I'll, I'll do the side. Yeah. Book number one. Yeah. Oh, how fun. <laughs> well, we have our first injury of the day. <laughs> Stephen punctured his finger. But in the meantime, I made a beautiful... As usual. Five... What was this called? The five... It's a five-hole, single-sewn book. A five-hole, single-sewn book. So we've done the three and we've done the five. Yeah. How you doing over there? I've lost my train of thought, so <laughs> I go. So I just asked what is her favorite project. So she told me to take this black box and just open it. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So that's called an etui. You may have seen etui on uh, crossword puzzles. Uh huh. This has got three vowels. And so that's an etui. And it's, um, I saw an antique one that somebody had. It was more like made out of chocolate box. And then um, a friend and I sort of redid it with using book binding techniques and silk. And you can, if you put it to your cheek, you can feel if it's cold, that makes it stay up. Oh, Just yeah. a little bit of coolness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Look at that. That'll at least protect it. Yeah. You can have Are it you so well. excited? I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> This has been so much oh, fun. Good. Thank good. you so much. I'll show you Steven's books because I realize you didn't get to see his. So these are Steven's. He was very colorful. And then this is the cover Patricia made for his magic Bible. So we're gonna throw on some comfy clothes, we're gonna rest, we're gonna read, and we're gonna eat some lunch. A lot of you ask me for healthy lunch ideas. One of my favorites are veggie quesadillas. They are super simple, super easy, and what's great is you can freeze them and throw them back in the toaster oven so you always have them on stock and in hand, and you can make like one huge batch and then have them. And yeah, I'm gonna share my recipe for it. It's super simple. Over here I have some onion, zucchini, um, peppers cooking with a little bit of olive oil. I also added a splash of water just to help them tenderize a little bit quicker. So that's going, no salt, no pepper added yet. Um, so that's going, and right now I'm going to take some of this corn off the cob and I have my tea kettle going with hot water. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a minute. The water is all set in the kettle. 
So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that hot water over this corn. And I'm just going to wait till it gets a little bit brighter yellow and then I'm just gonna drain it. I'm not gonna like cook it very long. Um, just enough to help get some of the starches off. Um, and that's how I always do my corn for a salad. Then I just let it chill. I run it under cold water to like shock it. And it's completely changed in color. All right, I'm gonna get this on a paper towel so it can dry. I have this pan on about medium high. I'm gonna hit it with some cooking spray and then just layer in my veggies. Um, on top of tortilla, a little bit of corn, and uh, some pepper jack and Monterey Jack cheese. And then we're just gonna cook them. After the quesadillas cook a few minutes on each side, I let it cool before I cut it. And then I'm just serving it with a little side of salsa. Steven is loving them. So I think it's been a successful, healthy lunch. We spent a lot of our time hiking and taking family walks, which was really nice because we were essentially completely off the grid, um, except for having Wi-Fi at the house and we just really loved that time to catch up really uninterrupted um, except for several mosquito bites but on one of our hikes which just happened to be the last day of pride i captured one of the coolest pictures i've ever taken over on instagram um, and i also got it on video which it's so fitting for the last day of pride to capture a rainbow I know that you all love book recommendations, but you also know that I have a deep love for small privately owned bookstores. And when we were in the village of Manchester, we came across the Northshire Bookstore. If you ever get the chance, it is a must, must go. I am dying to get back there um, just because there's something about being in a bookstore um, such as that, not like a Barnes and Noble, but like a really cool private owned bookstore that just makes me so happy. But I picked up three books. I wanna share them with you because I'm super excited. I've actually already started reading this one. I'm almost done. It's called The Travelers by Regina Porter. It's fantastic. I will read you a little bit of the inside to give you like a slight tease, but I will leave them all linked down below so you can go check them out further. Meet James Samuel Vincent, an affluent Manhattan attorney who shirks his modest Irish American background. James muddles through a topsy-turvy relationship with his son, Rufus, which is further complicated when Rufus marries Claudia Christie. These unforgettable characters' lives intersect with a cast of lovers and friends, the unapologetic black lesbian who finds her groove in the 1970s Berlin, a moving man stranded in Portsmouth, New Hampshire during a Thanksgiving storm, two half-brothers who meet as adults in the crayon factory, and a Coney Island waitress whose Prince Charming is too good to be true. Written with piercing humor and exacting dialogue and a beautiful sense of place, Regina Porter's debut is both an intimate family portrait and a sweeping exploration of what it means to be an American today. It is so funny. I laughed out loud. It's just a beautifully written book. Picked up two other books. One is called Once Upon a River, um, and it takes place in an ancient inn on the River Thames, um, the regulars are telling stories to while away the dark hours when the door bursts open to reveal a grievously wounded stranger in his arms the lifeless body of a small child. Hours later, the girl stirs, takes a breath, and returns to life. Is it a miracle? Is it magic? Or can science provide an explanation? These questions have many answers, some of them quite dark indeed. Those who dwell on the river bank apply their own ingenuity to solving the puzzle of the girl who died and lived again. Yet as the days pass, the mystery only deepens. The child herself is mute and unable to answer the essential questions. Who is she? Where did she come from? And to whom does she belong? So I'm really excited about this one. And then lastly, this one sparked me. You guys know I love like true crime. Um, so this is called The Five, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper. Um, and it's uh, a deep look at the five women um, and kind of like who they were. Um, and super interested in that. And then lastly, the books that I got obsessed with over vacation because they were mindless reads were actually recommended by Marnie Goldberg, Miss Goldberg here on YouTube. And they were the Country Club Murder series. There are like eight books in the series or seven and the eighth one is getting released. And I've been like burning through those nonstop. They're just like mindless, fun book reads. They're like very beachy vacation reads. 
and I'm loving those. So those are the books on my list currently. Um, and you know, I always have to share some books. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like this way of doing the travel vlog. I really liked it because it made me think about what were peak moments throughout um, to record so I didn't spend my whole vacation behind a camera. And let's face it, I was in the mountains, so it was pretty low key anyway. But I will catch you in my next one. There's a lot happening. I already have the footage filmed. I just have to edit it. One is a mudroom redo, which I'm so excited to share with you. Um, and that will be coming this week. In the meantime, I'm going to leave this video like I leave all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time, my friends. Bye.